All right. So we have one more for this last little section here. Um, again, back with some vector calculus and definitely a lot of integration methods. Um, let's uh, go ahead and dive in there. Uh, for our statement, we have a piece of wire bent into a loop, as shown, carries a current that increases linearly with time. I of t is equal to kt uh, for t between negative infinity to positive infinity. So we want to calculate the retarded vector potential A at the center, find the electric field at the center, and why does this neutral wire produce an electric field? Why can't you determine the magnetic field from this expression for A? Ooh, we got ourselves quite a conundrum coming up, don't we? All right, let's draw it out. So our, oops, sorry, resituate myself. Uh, we have a wire bent in a loop, the inner radius A, outer radius B. And you see, based on the arrow, that we're flowing uh, clockwise on the inside radius down the x-axis, counterclockwise on the outer radius down the x-axis again. So we definitely have ourselves set up for a contour integral here, and we're going to have to be careful um, when evaluating these things. Now let's note here, uh, again, we have the generalized potentials for the non-static sources. These are the retarded potentials evaluated at the retarded time. Um, but in order to um, evaluate for the vector potential, uh, A, R of T, we have to be uh, very careful with respect to uh, what the J current density is, and we're going to have to uh, be mindful to split things up very carefully. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that very quickly. So once we plug in I, which is evaluated at the retarded time, again, we were told that I was equal to KT, some linear uh, function. So what this is actually is KTR over script R DL, okay? So we transferred the vector component from I to the DL component, and that's exactly what we expect, okay? So the K being a constant gets pushed outside the integral, but we know that the retarded time is T minus script R over C DL. Okay, at this point, we are responsible for splitting up the integral. And so with that, we get uh, mu naught K over four pi, that's on the outside of the brackets together, and we get the numerator t over script r dl minus script r over c uh, divided by script r dl. Notice that the script r's cancel, beautiful. And in our next step, we're left with t uh, times the integral of one over r dl minus one over c dl, which that goes to zero, okay? So why is it that a complete loop goes to zero, that uh, integral of dl goes to zero? Well. In this case, the symmetry of it works out really, really well. If we were to parameterize this over each segment, uh, you know, however you want to label it, I think uh, the inner loop going from uh, pi to zero, d theta would be the line segment there with r, of course. And then you go from zero to uh, one or zero to whatever x is a to b on dr because you're expanding on the x-axis. And then on the outer radius, you go from zero to pi, r d theta. And then on the, um, on the return trip, you go from b to a on dr, and that all comes back to zero. Everything cancels out. So uh, yeah, that's kind of wicked, but also a nice result so where we don't have to worry about that um, closed integral loop of integral dl. However, what we do have to deal with is this one over script RDL. All right, so with that being said, since that closed loop is zero, we're just gonna forget about it and expand through that DL segment. That being said, that T gets brought outside, it's a constant two. So we have V naught KT over four pi, and I am labeling this uh, breakdown as integral one, which is one over A DL uh, for the script R, plus integral two, one over BDL for script R again. And then we have two running from A to B of DX over X in the X hat direction. Now again, the reason why is because we're running from the inside radius to the outside, and we're running from the outside radius to the inside. So we just doubled that up because we have to uh, put a negative sign in there 
and then we flipped the bounds. Anyways, uh, due to the uh, direction of it. But that being said, uh, we're in a situation now where we can uh, evaluate these pretty quickly. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive through that. We see from the uh, 1 over A DL, well, we're going through, what, half a circle there. So we use that argument to get rid of everything. So uh, once that's evaluated, we just get 2 over A. Yeah, 2 over A, and then 1 over A cancel with that A. 1 over B cancel with the B. Again, opposite orientation on the B, so hence the negative. And then we have uh, plus 2 L and a B over A. That's just a simple uh, calculation there. Nothing too bad, I would say. Um, but now you're left with 2x hat minus 2x hat. Those cancel from integrals 1 and 2. And so what we're left with is just that factor of 2 from the uh, A to B integral canceling out with a factor of uh, the factor of 2 and the 4 pi. And so that reduces down to mu naught kt over 2 pi ln of b over a in the x hat direction. Again, go back to learning how to parameterize these curves and be able to solve line integrals or in the complex analysis, these are contour integrals, learn how to uh, use them because you're not going to run away from them. That being said, now that we have the vector potential, it's very quick to find the electric field. Take the negative uh, time derivative of a, and we get mu naught k over 2 pi, negative, of course, ln of b over a over times x. This is so much easier than it is taking uh, the charge distributions and all that other stuff that we had to do before to find the electric field. Uh, it, just finding the vector potentials or the scalar potentials is so, so much easier. Okay. Anyways, so the change, the change in magnetic field induces the electrical field, Okay. And since we only know A at one point, i.e. the center, we can't compute the curl of A to get B. So this goes back to a situation where everything is uh, going to cancel out in a weird symmetrical way or they're going to interfere. So until we have something that isn't evaluated at 0, 0, 0, which would give us a problem in the domain space, you know, uh, we're not going to get anything unique or consistent. So it'll be very hard to determine here, but it does look like a fun problem. Definitely test out your mental math and uh, your calculus that you remember. But uh, yeah, pretty good. Good to go.